unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word.
If it had not been for the Lord who was always on my side, the enemy would have swallowed up the trial. Souls are far and escape. I hide in place in you. The foulest net is broken. I hail in the name of Lord. So Nothing without you, without you, you are the air that I breathe, can live without you, without Sato prosimando robo saca telebros. Cerebrosi la manto rimos tere la mama costa. Cerebros se le le manto robo sa. 
Somebody speak in other tongues. Tell him I'm nothing without you. Nothing without you. Nothing, nothing without you. I think it's Psalm 71. He says, I am as a wonder. I am as a wonder unto you. I am. Tell your neighbor and tell him, I'm not a normal man. I'm not a normal woman. I am as a wonder. Tell somebody, I'm a wonder. I'm someone they look at and they wonder and they say never nange. Ona ni amut amashele brosile bakashete ke shete le brosando robo shara bakoste de bayi. Kando ribro si ba jande ho sata kashe le bro. Jande ribo shika batalanda ra hoste le bakayara. Prande ho shika she prando ruro mazile ho tiri kasti jando robro kotele kaste bo shetele. Masire bro ho si kande ho stamandi kaso. Tina brasa la hati de broshi nando ho zakaye kabrusta lande histiza brisalando ri sande ku brasti celebro kaya brisolando robo se kase bro sakash de helebro nandi ho sake krumando ri no si celebro zile rata kande ho sinde pro ra tele hishiti kabrusta nando ri da kashite bro koyare brase kobro come on build yourself up a bit just build yourself up. The Bible says that he that speaketh in tongues builds himself up in the Lord. 
Say something. Masarababa. Shake it. I'm as a wonder. I am as a wonder. Oh, Sadamando Rico Zite. Sandarico Robrosileba. Satara Bracatele. Zobrosi Batale Cosa. This world has no choice. Uganda has no choice. Africa has no choice. Whether the devil wants it or not, I am a wonder. I am a success. I cannot fail. Even if I try. Masabakate. Jabrosi Balando Ricos. The path of the just shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. The Bible says the longer they live, the brighter they oh, oh, oh. the brighter they shine. Matalaba. Sebro Koleba. Mando Rico Sebro Ziba Lande Koshala. I'm glowing with light. I'm brighter every other day. Masolibro Sike today. Shibro Zamando Ricosa. I'm as a wonder to the world. I'm as a wonder to this nation. I'm as a wonder to everyone that meets me. Katelebro Sabaka. My heart is indicting a good matter. Masobro Koshile Brosile Mandoroko Sata. I speak of the things that I've done touching the king. And now my tongue is as a pen of a ready rider. Mako Rebo Sete. Mazi Brosile Kondo Huri Postira Bashe. His righteousness is on me. It is working through me. His wisdom encompasses my spirit. He fills my whole being. He's the embodiment of life in me. He's the extension of everything that gives life. And he resides in the inside of me. In him I live. In him I move and have. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Tell somebody I'm a wonder. Turn to the other one too and tell them I'm a wonder. I cannot fail. Tell somebody I cannot fail. I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will not die a normal man. I will not die a normal woman. Whether the devil wants shit or not, the word of God is in my spirit. I have everything I need. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. When men see me, they know God. The atmosphere is changing for me. The economies of this world are changing for me. The systems of this world are bowing for me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I cannot fail. I cannot be slowed. I cannot be deranged. I cannot be derailed. I can't be disappointed. I can't be. I cannot be. He has been made unto me wisdom and redemption and sanctification. He in him I hid all traces of knowledge and wisdom. I am complete in him who is the principality and ruler of all. The same spirit that raised Jesus. Jesus from the dead, the same spirit is inside you. Oh, 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 my God, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I don't know whether somebody understands what I'm saying. But if you do, I want you to receive what is coming right now. Are you ready? One, two, three. Take it in the name of Jesus. Receive. There's something. There's something. I feel something. I feel something. It is changing your course. Receive it in the name. Receive it in the name of Jesus. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith.
Shere prosa la mando robos tere vaya. Shire coste le manto risa lando rosta. Shire prosa la mando. Shere prosa lando robos saca sala bracasta. Rasende re cosa la prosa le mando robos tere. Shere prosa lo le mando robos. Now listen to me. First Samuel chapter 8. If you're there, you say amen. The Bible says, and it came to pass that when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. And now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second Abiah, and there were judges in Beersheba, and his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after Lucar and took bribes and perverted judgment. And all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together. And came to Samuel and to Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thine way. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. The Bible says, But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, He says, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel, the Bible says, prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. And according to all the works which they have done since the day I brought them up out of Egypt unto this day wherewith they have forsaken me and served the other gods, so they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest so many unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. The manner of the king that shall reign over them. Underline that. And the Bible says, he will take your sons, the Bible says in verses 8 and 12, and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground and reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries, to be cooks and to be bakers. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. And he will take of your men servants and your maid servants and your godliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. He will take even the godly young men and put them to his work. And the Bible says, He will take the tenth of your sheep, again the tithe comes through, and he shall be his servants. And you shall cry out in that day because your king, which you shall have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people, the Bible says, refused to obey the voice of Samuel and they said no we will have a king over us the Bible says and Samuel had all the words of the people rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord and the Bible says the Lord said unto Samuel make them a king praise the Lord the thing about this is like in verse 20 they wanted to have a king also like all the other nations the Bible says to judge over them, to go out before them and fight their battles. Now, let me start preaching or sharing something here. There is something I want to touch that is very heavy. Eh? And I believe that by the time I'm done here with, um, I don't know how or what some of you are going to think after tonight. But I believe that what I'm going to share is going to stay on some of your hearts for a long time. Not that it's a different sermon from what you hear every day. But it's going to touch a very sensitive grain of your being. Some of you are going to think about today for a long time. Praise the Lord Jesus. So Samuel is a judge. He has sons. They walk not in the way of the Lord. There is something that Samuel was not taught of Eli. And there is something also that was not taught Eli. They didn't know how to raise children. The same thing that happened to Eli's sons is the same thing that happens to Samuel's sons. You almost would think that because Samuel was under Eli for a long time and he saw the sons lose it and die, you almost think that Samuel would have learned the same lessons that Eli should have known. 
because he served that man and his spirit was not defiled even though all the sons of Eli were defiled. But he did not. And so the same thing that happened in the household of Eli happened in the household of Samuel. There's something deep there. Raise up a child in the way they should go. Praise the Lord. It's almost as though sometimes it seems as though it's obvious that because we are men of God, our children are supposed to be men and women of God. But that's not so. Praise the Lord. We must learn. We must learn. So, he wants to make them judges, but he cannot because they're funny. So the elders come and tell him, make us a king. We want to be like the other nations. To go before us, to judge us, and to do whatever it is. And to fight battles for us. He did not please Samuel. He goes to the Lord. Why are these people asking for a king? And the Lord tells him, they have not rejected you. They have rejected me. Like they have done all the other years. So this is not even about you. They just don't feel like I should reign over them. And God in his infinite love, he lets it happen and he says, okay, make them a king. But before you make them a king, explain to them the manner in which the king they choose shall be like. And God starts to explain to Samuel what the king will be. Now, I want you to note the language used. The Bible says they wanted to make them a king. God tells Samuel, explain to them the manner of the king. Okay? So they are asking for a king. God's issue is about the king. The system. It was about a particular system. Oh, did you get it? The Bible tells us they asked for a king. And before they receive a king, the Lord tells them, First, explain to them the manner of the king they are asking for. The manner, the kind of the king. The king, not a king, but the king they are asking for. Because when Israel asked for a king, they did not know that they were trying to open their hearts to a system. And that is why God does not just define the individual. He defines the manner of the individual. They did not know that by detaching themselves from the fountain of life, God, and choosing to be led like the other nations, as unto a king like other nations have had kings, they did not know that they were just not choosing an individual. They were submitting themselves under a particular system. How do I know that it was a particular system? Some of you have realized that when the Lord introduced the system of the kingship as of the nations of the earth, Many people did not know that that kingship of the system of the world came with certain circumstances that were contrary to the covenant that the Lord had with the children of Israel. I'll give you an example. When the king Nebuchadnezzar ruled amongst the people of the world, the Bible tells us that he was the king of Babylon. How many of you know that? But even though he was the king of Babylon, the scriptures are very clear that the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar was upon all the nations of the world. Did you hear that? And how many of you know that Babylon is not just a state, it's not just a place, it's a system. How many of you knew that? That Babylon is a system. That is why the Bible says, come ye out of Babylon. This guy was the king of Babylon, but he had the yoke of all the nations of the world, literally, all the nations of the world were literally submitted to the spirit and form of Babylon, which was ruled by the person of the king, Nebuchadnezzar. That is why the Bible says, even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations. All nations. All nations. That means there was a point in time where... Nebuchadnezzar had something on him that had influence over all the nations of the world. The devil took our Lord and Savior Jesus in the times of temptation in the wilderness. and took him to a cliff. You remember the story. And the Bible tells us, he tells him, look down. Look at the kingdoms. And the Bible says he showed him the 
kingdoms of the world and all their glory. And all their glory. That means they had a certain glory to them. And he told them, if you will bow down to me, I shall give them to you. Now, at what point is there a cliff in the world that can show a man all the kingdoms of the world? It wasn't a physical vision. It was a spiritual vision. Because the Bible says he took him in a nick of time, in a moment. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. That means it was just like a flash in the spirit. And immediately the Christ saw all the kingdoms as they are arrayed by the devil. Of course, I'm not talking about physical eyes. If I'm talking about physical eyes, you cannot see these kingdoms. You cannot see these systems. But because you don't see them, and I don't mean they don't exist. Of course, some of you know a couple of nations that have still held uh, kingship and all these things. Yes, those are to the extent of what you see. But there are even kingdoms in the earth, the metaphysical world, that you do not know either see. Some of them are in form of secret societies. Some of them are in form of groups of people you might not even imagine. But there are people, as it may be, in this world that know exactly what is happening on the face of the earth. And there are also people who are very ignorant about what is happening on the face of the earth, who think that everything you see is as straightforward as is. Some of you think that you coincidentally woke up and you are a third world country. You were not just waking up and then you are a third world country. That's not how stuff happens. If you went a couple of hundreds years ago, you'll find that African nations were almost close to the wealth of many of the nations you see in the second and first world. Some of you who read history know that. But there's a reason why our people stayed back and those people advanced. It's not by mistake that when they start looking at life expectancy, for example, they come to Africa and they tell you, oh, Life expectancy in Africa is lower than probably in first world countries. It doesn't make sense if you think about it. Oh yes, doesn't the Lord watch over us? Oh yes, doesn't he keep us? Oh yes, doesn't he keep us healthy? Oh yes, isn't he the Lord that watches over us? Oh yes, isn't he the Lord that healeth all our diseases? Oh yes, it's true. But why is it that HIV and AIDS are all in Africa more than they are across the world? You mean to think that we are the most pervasive race on the face of the earth? No, that's not the truth. So it is with poverty and many of these other things. Start to think for a moment that even the amount of money that you're earning, you're earning it because you're under a certain system. Start to think of it that the kind of clothes you're putting on, the house you're living in, the life that you're living, the health that you even are occurring right there, some of you. It's because you're under a certain system and you don't even know. Am I making sense? Oh, our education. Why is it that you're under a certain system of education? You're under a certain system of education because that's where you are. That's where you have been put. You, you see what I'm saying? And some of you say, ah, no, it's because I'm in Uganda. Oh, it's because of this. Oh, no, 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 no. These things go way beyond some of you can keep language to. Many of these things that are happening don't happen by mistake. They don't happen by mistake. And as a church of Christ, we have to grow past thinking that things just happen. No, no, things just don't happen. There is no place in the world where things just happen. There is no middle ground in the things of the spirit. It's either light or darkness. There's no gray area. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everything has a certain order. Everything has a certain order. That is why even when we are preaching the gospel, we look for a certain order. The Bible says the preacher sought words that were acceptable. Words that would give knowledge and understanding. That he would set them in a certain order. This is the preacher, the writer of Ecclesiastes. Acceptable words. Words that can be can tag a man to purpose. Not just words that just excite you. Not words that just tickle your fancy. Not words that just make you feel happy and then you go back home and say, ah, I had a nice service. No, we give you words that tag you to purpose. And because they come with purpose, they come with a certain responsibility. Because it's given to you to know. And the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. What does the Lord require of us in this dispensation? How can we live in this time and die a third world country? With the gospel. 
you understand what I'm saying? How can we live under the systems of the world? Many of us have now gotten to a point where we are so as predictable as can be. You, you, you look like the school you went to. You look like the university you graduated to. You look like the job that you're working. You dress like the job that you are. You think like the country you're in. Literally, somebody looks at you and they can explain why you are where you are. And the truth of the matter is, even in the richest nation of the world, there is a beggar on the street. Because it's a system issue. How be it that nations of the world used to have political systems, social systems, economic systems, men are running as they are, but they are under certain yoke. Yoke means that there's a spirit above that speaks and controls how far you can go and what you can access. Nebuchadnezzar was not just a normal king. That is why many of you read the scriptures and realize that the Lord judged him. He was not just a normal king. This is ancient wisdom. Some things I wish I could explain by language, but I might not be able to. You don't just have authority over all nations. You don't just. And the man who has that same authority, you're going to realize, he was not a believer in the God of Israel. That same man took their young men and put them to work. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel. You can read the list. And when he's cooking, he's getting a three. One of the royal tribe, get of the royal tribe. You understand what I'm saying? People who have a destiny and a course on their lives. Give them a particular food for three years. Teach them the language, the Italian language. And after three years, they'll be able to serve me. And this is a, an unbeliever, a king of the world, a secular, a worldly king under a Babylonian system. Saying that if you get of the royal tribe, feed them with my food, teach them my language, they'll serve me. Now, many people think that that ended in the Old Testament dispensation. But even in this generation, men have learned the language of Babylon. They have eaten of the food of Babylon. And they don't even know it. They don't even know it. Let me give you an example of what I'm trying to explain. The Bible says in Psalms 135 verses 4, that when God created Israel and he set them apart, he chose Jacob and to himself and Israel, the Bible says he called them a peculiar treasure. The Hebrew word there is segula. They are a peculiar treasure. That is why the Bible calls him Adonai. Adonai means that he possesses his own. They're not supposed to be under the possession of any other. When they were created and made in this world, they were supposed to be a treasure. A priceless treasure unto the Lord. Somebody say amen. Deuteronomy 7, 6. He says, for ye are holy and set apart people to the Lord your God. And the Lord your God has chosen you. Again, he says, to be a special people unto himself. Above, listen, all people that are on the face of the earth. Even above Nebuchadnezzar. Christianity. The faith. Salvation. God has. He has not called you. When the Bible says you're in the world but not of the world. He has called you to be above all the people. The face of the earth. That is why he says. Oh you are the head and not the tail. He says you are above and not beneath. There is nobody in the world. Under the Babylonian system. That is supposed to be better than you. In anything. So he was not a liar when he says that we are the heads and not the tail. He was not a liar when he says that we are above and not beneath. He was not a liar when he says that you shall lend to nations and you shall have no need of borrow. The Bible says this is to the word of the decree and the watchers and the holy men. That the Lord God rules in the kingdom of men and he giveth it to soever he wishes and of all the bestest, the humblest before him. In other words, he has handed the kingdom of this world to you and I. That is why he gave us the ultimate opportunity to occupy until he comes. There is nobody who is a believer speaking in tongues, reading the Bible, praying every Thursday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Sunday, Friday. You have a relationship with God. Nobody with this relationship is supposed to be a normal man. But now we've even flipped and not known who we are to the place where we even admire the men of this world. 
if they were a treasured possession of value set apart by God to be better than all the people of the face of the earth? How can they seek to be like other nations? How can they seek to put a system above themselves? He says, your young men shall be furnished. Even the young men of God. The Bible says they shall be put under his work. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Let me read you a scripture that annoyed me. Jeremiah chapter 2 verses 11. The Bible speaks of how a nation has changed its gods. And his people, the Bible says, have changed their glory for that which does not profit. They have changed their glory for that which does not profit. They were fearfully and wonderfully made. They were the treasure, the dime, the priceless thing, the beauty of perfection. And they traded their glory for things that profit not. Isaiah chapter 2 and verses 8. The Bible speaks of how the land is full of idols and they worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. They worship. Let me explain what it means to worship the work of your hands. To worship the work of their hands. When he was telling them about their king that will rule over them, he said their young daughters will go into confectionaries and be cooks. They'll be enslaved. Their young men and women shall be thrown in the fields and they will work tirelessly. And the Bible says that he shall rob even of their tent. Do you know how many people, eh, Christians, can't even give tithe because the problems they have are bigger than the pay they get? It's serious. Don't even laugh about it. Do you know there's somebody right now, they wake up every morning, they have an enslaved spirit, they wake up every morning, they do an 8 to 5 p.m. job every day. Whether it's raining or the sun is shining, the blistering heat and the smoldering cold, any, whatever you want to call it. They wake up every morning, they get their bag, they go to work the whole day, and then they earn a million shillings, but they are indebted by probably 25 million shillings. Every month they are paying off loans. Yes, they speak in tongues. Yes, they are born again, but they are under a certain system. And that system is saying you're as predictable as the world that you're in. You're as predictable as the world that you're in. Because they know that if you go to school, you're going to graduate after this long. And if you graduate, this is how much you can make. If you're not a graduate and you're supposed to be making a wage, this is how much you can earn. So many people are predictable. They look, oh, they, we even have salary scales of this is how much you're supposed to be earning because of the job that you've done. Or because of these years of experience in working environment, this is how much it can give you. They promote you. And then the promotion, they add 200,000. And then they add 300,000. You began a job 10 years ago and you are earning 1 million. And then two years later they added you to another 1.5 and then three they put you to two the fourth year they put you to 2.5 the fifth year they put you to three million the economy is going up everything is going up cement is becoming more expensive cars are becoming more expensive the roads now you're starting to pay road toll you understand what i'm saying the economy doesn't wait for you the systems don't wait for you the issues and problems don't wait for you whether you want it or not the expenses of medical bills a couple of years ago are not the same expenses right now to see a doctor basic consultation is eighty thousand before they even touch you you see what i'm saying fares in the taxis have gone up fares in the cars have gone up Everything has gone up. Men are living literally in bare minimum. And you went all your life from the time you were born. They took you to school every morning. To graduate at 23 or 24. To go for a master's. Because even the degrees now are not enough. Are you hearing me? They're not what? Enough. 90% of the workforce in the United Arab Emirates. Is foreigners 90 percent those boys don't work they don't even go to school they wake up in the morning and play with wild pets are you hearing me then somebody gets from here and lists with a company that goes overseas to enroll people for jobs and then you go overseas and then you under somebody who didn't even go to school because you need a sponsor and then you start earning and almost 40 percent of your salary is cut and it's just taken on the account of a guy who doesn't even know God, does not speak in tongues, doesn't tithe neither first fruit. He doesn't even know anything. He's just living in this world to drive a Lamborghini. Facing a black box every day five times. Are you listening to me, somebody? What are we doing in the church? 
We're not tagging men to purpose. We're simply exciting people. People are still on the level of... Even when sometimes you look at the body of Christ, many of them are not even ready to embrace the blessing. Their spirits are too weak. Somebody has spent 20 years, they're dealing with one family curse. It has refused to leave. Every morning they're going for deliverance. Every evening they're going for deliverance. Every year, two years, three years, four years, five years. Somebody fasts for 40 days, 40 years. They're they fasting, they're praying, they're breaking, they're uprooting, they're streaming, they're pulling their hair out, they're going on mountains, they're going in valleys, they're changing clothes, they're changing access, they're changing attitudes, they're growing older and younger. And then you say, but... If you are the prayer warrior who you are for 20 years, surely there would have been things on you that show that God owns you. We live in a situation where up to now, up to now, men are not free. And sometimes the problem is not bondage. The problem is that we have not taught them how to stay free. Because some people enjoy seeing people bound. If you're mature, you understand. And some of you don't even understand what I'm saying. You, you understand what I'm saying? You do? Now, unless the Lord of Sabaoth does something, if we continue under this system, if we submit ourselves, you see, this is what really happened. When you get a priceless, a treasured possession, like Israel was, and then they get discontent in God, when a man or a woman who has a covenant with God gets discontented, usually that man will get deception in his life. And the spirit of deception will cause them to seek to settle for a lesser glory in the thought that it's a higher glory. I don't know that you understood what I just said. How can the treasured possessions of Israel ask that they be subject under the system where their children would work in, in confectionaries and as cooks and their young men would stand in front and behind and carry chariots and they say, give us a king. They did not know who they were. That is what they call true sanctification. The primary ministry of the sanctification of the spirit is unto obedience of truth. But when a man gets into the second and third place of the sanctification of the spirit, you realize that God helps you understand your identity, defines your function, and gives you a name. He gives you a name. He gives you a name. All of those things that Christ experienced. He was given a name that is above every name. You understand what I'm saying? The demons are speaking and they say, Paul, we know. We know him. He has a name in the other realm. He has a name in the other realm. But who are you? We don't know who you are. Identify yourself. Some of you think identity is just about, I know myself. I know who I am. No, it's not just the things that you're speaking. It's not just the things that you're speaking. Some of you, you speak, oh, I'm this, I'm that. God is in me. Oh, I have the life of God. Oh, I'm this and that. You can confess the best things. You speak in tongues, but you're living a life of defeat step by step every other day. When they look at your life, it's just a life of one problem into another problem into another problem. You haven't gotten so agitated and bitter with the world that you even hate the sight of success. And every time you're discontent because you don't know who you are, you start wishing that the Lord would make you like others. A young man a couple of years ago sang a song in the local language. He said, God help me. Why don't you help me? And I'd be like others. They drive cars and build houses. This was a boy singing gospel. For me, I don't have anything to my name. I got to know later I heard that that young man died. How can a child of God Pray to be like a person of the world because the person of the world is driving a car. The ordination on your life is bigger than a car. 
He says, ask ye me of nations. And I shall give them to you. That's the portion. Give me the message version of that. He says, ask ye. He didn't tell you, ask for a car, ask for a house. He says, what do you want? Name it. Nations as a present. Continents as a price. He says, next verse. And he says, you can command them all to dance for you or throw them out with tomorrow's trust. That's what you mean to me. Because I have priced you to that level. He says, even the hairs on your head, they are counted. He knows how much hair is on your head. He cares that much to that detail. He knows he has fearfully, fearfully, fearfully and wonderfully made you. You were not supposed to walk this world like a slave. You were not supposed to walk this life like a survivor. You were not supposed to walk this life. Some of you, you are enslaved on jobs. Some of you are enslaved in your marriages. Some of you are enslaved in your different churches. Some of you are enslaved. If you examine yourself, you realize it's, a, it's almost as though worship you, but you cannot go this far. Make money, but you cannot go this far. Build a business, but you cannot go this far. And many have accepted it. And the more discontent we are, without the revelation of who we are, many times we tend to ask for lesser glory into things that profit not. And now we worship the works of our hands. We worship the works of our hands. Somebody tells you, oh, I did not pray on Sunday. Why? I was working the whole week. Who were you serving? Mammon. The Babylonian system has weighed you out. It's killing your marriage. It's killing your relationships. You don't even have time to yourself anymore. You wake up in the morning, 8 every day, 5 p.m. You're coming from work. You're so zonked. You sit in a, in a cheap car. You sit in traffic until you reach home at about 9 p.m. And then you find the kids sleepy. And then you have to make food for your husband. And then tomorrow morning, you, you're doing it one year. You're doing it two years. Oh, we even need you. We're not even going to give you leave. Because once you go and leave, the business collapses. And then you're living that life. Oh, I'm not saying don't work. I'm only saying understand this. Otherwise, some of you are going to live enslaved lives until the day you die. I know of a man who used to work in a bank. He worked for in the bank for 25 years. Then towards the end of those 25 years of working, very old fellow, he left banking. And then he got a bad ulcer. And they took him to every doctor and they could not treat it. And he sold everything he worked for in 25 years. All into the disease. And after the disease finished all his labor for 25 years, he died. And he was a believer. Speaking in tongues and reading the Bible like you and I. And I knew that there was a problem in this world. There was a problem in this world. God has not called you to live a certain life. I don't care whether you're in the third world. I don't care whether you are in the second world. I don't even care whether you think you're under a certain system. God has not called you to lead a certain life. Do you know how many people are hypertensive, low blood pressure, high blood pressure? Oh, why? They are overworking. They are stressed. They are depressed. They have gotten to a point where the, the face is all pulled. You're waking up to eat the bread of sorrow during day and during night. I'm not saying don't work. No, we're supposed to be hard workers. But that blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. He has even robbed of their tights. Some of you, you can't even tithe. Even if you want to, you can't. Now people are in the glory of the worship of the works of their hands. To the extent now that a man can miss a service because he is tired. He was serving who? Babylon. Oh, I'm not going to do this. Why? Because of the works of your hands. Some of you can't even do certain things in the gospel anymore. Because you will not appear right in the Babylonian system. You can't even witness on Jesus because you'll not appear right in the Babylonian system. You can't even stand on the streets and preach or sit in a taxi and share the word of God because you have to leave the brand of the company you're working for. A company, a simple company. You can't even... Some of you even when they ask you, are you born again? You tell them, no, I'm a Christian. You, you don't want to associate... 
You have exchanged your glory for things that profit not. You're running something, as the Bible says, you're hitting uncertainty. You're fighting as one that beateth the air. You're running in uncertainty. You don't even have a surety of tomorrow. Except the excitement that is in your head that confuses you for the faith of the spirit. Oh, I'm sure this will happen. I'm sure this will... From whence do you affirm those things? When you don't know who you are. When you do not know who you are. And because you have been used to that system, you have created a certain world of you that gives a certain impression of who you're really not. Because outside you are strong, but within you are the weakest. And now you even have started to borrow the glory of others and put yourself beyond rule and the measure which was ordained you. So, the Bible tells us that he was the tallest man in Israel, but he could not face Goliath. And there's this 17 year old boy with a covenant with God, and he thinks, Oh, this glory can't be complete. Take, 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 take my armor. Take my armor. So that when he wins, I said, No, 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 it was my armor. It wasn't your armor. And the boy takes it off because it didn't fit, gets five smooth stones. It was not precision. It was the anointing. Sir, sir, sir. Bah! The whole nation was down. The whole nation was down. The whole nation was down. Because one man knew God. One man knew God. It began when he was a shepherd boy. He says, I shall not rest until the presence of God returns back to Israel. Because Israel without a covenant... The ark of the covenant was like a nation without the guarantee that God was with them. Do you know how many people simply speak that God is with me, but God is not with you? You have submitted yourselves to the systems of this world. Even if you were yourself, some of you, you have compromised way beyond to survive. You're the Christian, but you're the one they use when they have to, to overstate per diem. You're the Christian, but you're the one they use when they need to add on zeros. Because you, you've even gotten a name for it. You call it God providing, providing in uncommon places. <laughs> Praise God. I refuse to be among of those nations. Of this world. I refuse to be subject to the kingdoms and the systems of this world. I refuse it. 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 In Psalm 33, he says he chose them for a heritage. Do you know what it means to be a heritage of God? It means every time he looks at you, he thinks these are the people that shall prove that I existed. That shall prove that I existed. People are sick. People are beggarly. Everything wrong is happening to Christians. Because many of them, even without knowing, they are under a system, even without knowing. Come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon. Just come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon. Let me give you an example. Somebody wakes up in the morning. And then he plans their life. And then they think, um, I have two million on my account. If I get that two million, and then um, I save off 100,000 uh, every month, because the other one goes in loans and rent and fees and all these things. For a year, that's 1.2 million. For 10 years, that is 12 million. For 20 years, that is 24 million. So I would have built at least like a small house of two bedrooms and maybe something. So what let me do? Let me borrow money from the bank and then start. So you're paying 20% say per year of your 10 or, or 20, 20 something million that you borrowed. So by the time you get a mortgage for 10 years, you have actually paid almost double the amount of money you borrowed because this system tells you if you do not borrow, you cannot be a success. And you believe it. And then you start planning on that. You start thinking on that. You start competing at workplace on that. You sit at your workplace and you think that your destiny is in the pay they give you. And then there's another one who thinks that because they don't have a job, 
they are going to fail. It's in you because the system you're living under tells you that if you have a job, you'll have little. If you don't have a job, you're not going to have... All of that is deception. Now, some of you might think I'm saying don't work hard. No, no, no. I worked hard in the bank. Even now, I'm a hard worker. I preach every day. Are you hearing me? But I'm enjoying it every day because I'm not doing it under the system of this world. I enjoy what I do. I enjoy what I do. And every part of my life now is starting to revolve beyond a system that can be seen even in this nation. And I believe it and I know it and I'm seeing it. Some of you, if I told you my testimony, you'd faint. And then they carry you back home. <laughs> and I believe that there are people here who understand and have experienced the hand of the Lord Beyond the system of Babylon. Not just encouraging yourself. No, I'm talking of things that can happen in your life. And you're sure that I'm no longer under the economy of Uganda. I'm no longer subject to the politics of this land. I'm no longer subject to the social systems of this world. I'm no longer subject to the worlds of... The, I'm no longer subject to my... I'm not subject to anything in this world. Now, even on the pulpit, as a preacher, I have to do my part. Because I draw your expected end. That is why it hurts me that somebody can have an opportunity to stand before the altar of Jesus Christ and abuse another person. I just don't get it. Even the guy abusing his third world is in a version that you don't even describe. It has no words to describe. Do you understand what I'm saying? Two men are falling in a ditch and one in a ditch is also abusing the other guy in the ditch. Do you understand what I'm saying? We can't even have basic unity of the faith in the body of Christ. We can't even agree on something. Agree on simple thing. We've been to crusades in up country. You take a crusade, you've spent I don't know how many millions. And then you put it there. And the guy says, ah, for us we're not going for that crusade. Ah, those guys, we don't believe in them. They are, they are, you're like, wait. Now there's a village guy. <laughs> like I, I met a certain pastor friend of mine. And he told me, some pastor got a vision somewhere up country and he says the lord has revealed to me that every minister in the district where we are at who is driving a car goes underwater now listen listen to that every person who is driving a car in that district and i say no the lord revealed to this man of god that everybody who is driving a new car and they are a man of god they got it from underwater now imagine this one is also a pastor. I don't know whether I'm making some sense. Somebody said, God, do something in our land. That is why I tell people that if you're just, you see, one time I said something about revival. And some people are like, oh, this guy is attacking revival. I am not attacking revival. I'm only saying revivals have come and gone, existed and gone. But if any revival carries not the spirit of reformation, reformation that the wisdom working in the lives of the men which has been revived coincides with the spirit of grace operating on their lives to demonstrate God we are wasting time people get born again every day we lead them to the altar they get born again they confess the Lord Jesus and then they go back home and become normal people dealing with the same generational curses dealing with the same demons of their cousins and uncles they deal with the same spirits that they've been fighting since they were little and then they die like normal average men because reformation is not in the church if there is no reformation men cannot be awake that's what they call awakening I'm not disqualifying the spirit of revival no Revival is wonderful, but to the degree only that I have known men which have been revived and they died normal lives. We know men who are once filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and healing the sick and casting out devils and they die like paupers on the face of this earth. We see our prophets running in caves because they cannot stand to face Jezebel. They don't even know anymore that there are 7,000 guys hid. They hear of one side, but they don't hear of the other because you understand what I'm saying? Now, even our own people are famished in the word. People can't sit down to sound teaching. Because someone wants to go to church and they tell them, what is the Lord saying? What is he doing in my life? 
Cast it out. You know, and it's okay to heal the sick. It's beautiful to cast out devils out of you. All of that stuff is beautiful. But this is eternal life. That you might know the one true God and his only son, Jesus. Through his word. That is the word that was sent unto Jacob. And the Bible says it lit the whole of Israel. It lit the whole of Israel. Eternity, I always tell people, it's worth investing into. Don't read the Bible just to get a job. Don't listen to a CD just to get a car. Listen to a CD because you're up to something. Read the word because you feel like God has placed something in you that is going to change this world. Be a world changer. Look at this continent and understand that you have a responsibility that crosses beyond the borders of your race, your color, your tribe, your skin. Even the defined boundaries. Let us stop reading the Bible like we are reading it just to, to fill our shops. Let's stop reading the word as if we are Reading it just to get husbands. There's somebody reading the word. They are here stressed. Why? Because they need rent. What's the difference between you and the people of the world? And that is why when Paul comes to church, he prays for them that prayer. He says that the Lord God of our Lord and Savior Jesus might grant unto you a spirit of wisdom and understanding or revelation in the knowledge of Christ. That your eyes being flooded with light, you might know what is the hope of your calling and what are the glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints and what is, the Bible says, so that you can know and understand the immeasurable, the unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in us. For us who believe as demonstrated in his mighty strength. That is what the church is supposed to be for. To open your eyes to see. What is the hope of your calling? How much immeasurable strength is inside you? How much unlimited, surpassing greatness of power that is working? You can do anything in this world. You can... And the Bible says, and there is nothing that shall be impossible with you. Nothing. That is why he uses expensive statements like whatsoever you shall ask. Whatsoever... Are you hearing me? Imagine for a moment when you can get whatever you ask. Just imagine for a moment. Just imagine for a moment. And then God fulfills it in the New Testament dispensation. And he tells you, no, I've actually given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. I've actually blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly presence of Christ Jesus. Never look at anybody in this world and admire them. Never. Because greater is he which is in you than he that is in the world. We have to preach acceptable words. Preach a gospel of purpose. That's the preacher. The Bible says that's the preacher. He sought out acceptable words. He preached things that were calling men to purpose. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. To preach men into purpose. Literally. That every time you hear the gospel, you feel like there's a certain guy they are calling out. And the call on his life is bigger than Uganda. That's how we rightly write down the words of truth and carry correct sentiment. The sentiment I see in the church today is just men with mixed and confused emotions, melting them before the altar, weeping and crying, even for things that are not supposed to be lamented over. And they miss out on the things they, they really ought to seek God for. It's almost as though the devil has deluded us from what is really important in the body of Christ. And now we are investing more time in what is not important. They rebuke a devil on someone for 30 years. What nothing. Which devil can't leave you? Why you? Why doesn't it go to the other guy who is facing a black box? Spirit of poverty. Leave. Why you? Who is speaking in tongues and reading the Bible? Something must change. Tell somebody something must change. Listen to me. We can't build anymore a certain way. Because if we do build a certain way, 
it only means that the people who are going to come after us will look at us and say those fellows were not wise. We can't preach a certain way. We can't pray a certain way. We can't believe a certain way. Some of you, you have to be a bit more crazy than you are. Babylon has composed you to a place where you, your glory is in the works of your hands. Your glory. If they ask you, tell us about you. You can only talk about the car you're driving, the house you have, the, car, uh, the things you've done, the plot of land you have, the shoes you have. You can only boast over that. That is how far your glory, oh God. Win souls. Be a bit more crazy for the gospel. Die. Draw priorities in the spirit. Are you hearing me? Start to believe God for something bigger than your car job. Start to believe God for something bigger than your car 200 million house, your car 300 million house. Start to believe God. Some of you, you feel you even arrive. You're in a small little plot of 200 million. Hey, that's even a lot. Some of you, even in your rental, you feel you have arrived. You. We must preach the gospel until the richest men are in the church. The most successful career people are in the church. The most successful marriages are in the church. The most successful intercessors are in the church. The biggest doctors in the world are in the church. The biggest entrepreneurs are in the church. Everything, head and not the tail, above and not beneath, upward and upward only. There are some scriptures we are reading and we just ignore them. They look like they have never been called for us. You shall learn to nations. You shall learn to nations. Yet you don't even have the faith to live without borrowing. Oh. That's why some of you, God must teach you a certain contentment. Because that's where much gain begins. That's where much gain begins. When you substitute that, you're in trouble. He says, godliness with contentment is of great gain. And what did they do? They exchanged their glory for things that do not profit. Many of you are running after things. You are spending countless hours in things that do not profit. You don't even know that they don't profit. You don't even know that they don't profit. Invest time in the kingdom. I don't care how born again you are. Invest time in the kingdom. I don't care whether you're the CEO, you're too special, you're driving a very expensive car. Invest time in the kingdom to Jake Amaru. No, seriously. Invest time. If you're choosing to believe, believe like a madman. Are you hearing me? If you're choosing to pray, pray like a madwoman. You understand? Pack your Mercedes very well. Let it come out shining. And then put on your shoes and say, Alabaya. Why? Because you have a course. That the Lord has set you on and it is bigger than that car. We can't lose another generation. We can't. We can't. Your language. You remember I told those boys that they should speak the Chaldean language. Because if they can speak the Chaldean language... If they can start speaking like the world, it's enough. They can serve the king. Because some of you, you're actually under the system you're under because you talk like that system. Oh, there's poverty in Uganda. Then you also enjoy the conversation. Yeah, by the way, all these leaders of ours, all of them are corrupt. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. You're from Zion. Judge the matter. Squake up in the morning and say from today, anybody that becomes corrupt in this nation, I shall arrest you in the name of Jesus. And it shall be so. We can't be born again and we're speaking like the people of the world. You have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place of Christ Jesus. You cannot talk like you're not a blessed person. Oh, I need God to help me. To help you with what? What was not given? What was not finished? No, no, no. no. Some of you think Fanero just happened. No, it did not, did not happen. It was called the fight of faith. Are you hearing me? You wake up in the morning and start speaking things until you start sounding mad. And then you hear yourself and you're like, but I think I'm mad. But then the more mad you feel, the more true you feel you are. Are you hearing me? Oh, then you start speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking. 
you have to get to a point where you have no choice. The food. I'm talking of the message. I'm talking of the message. Some of you have to, you know people, there are people who don't even cipher. They can't understand that this is not for me. Me, I can't listen to some things. One time I was flipping my channels and then some guy says, he was on television, says, you know, sometimes we just want to tell people about the good things of God and what he does and the life of God and the successes of men, but sometimes we don't tell people that you can fail. Swah! Immediately. Bishop Yongamba, what are you telling me? Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and he maketh manifest the sum of his knowledge by us in every place. That means everywhere we are going, people are supposed to say, how come it's working for her? How come it's working for him? Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. No way. When they are looking for millionaires in dollars, they have to look for them here. You don't understand what I'm saying. When they are looking for the healthiest people, they have to look for them here. When they are looking for the best marriages in... Oh. Some guy asked me one time, who is the deepest preacher you know? I told him me. Apostle, I'm not talking. I said, no, 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 you don't get it. Me. If you feel you're the deepest also, pronounce it on yourself. It's a free world. Are you hearing me? Listen, listen, listen. We have to see God. And I mean see God. I'm not talking about the God who pays rent. That one is okay. Thank you, Lord. I'm not talking about the God who pays fees. No, no. We want, listen. Some of us are entering things that men will need to stammer to testify. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Something happens in your life and when somebody starts to testify, he says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, has not entered into the hearts of man. I want God to do something in your life that a normal language can't articulate. Why I has not seen? Because it has not seen it. I'm starting to believe God for things that have not been seen. I'm starting to believe God for things. I don't want people to, uh, there's that distinction. I don't want people to say, he, this guy, he did it like so and so. No. I want something to happen in your life. And people say, no, ever since I was born, up to this age, what is happening in this man's life? What is happening in this woman's life? We have never seen it. We have never heard it. We have never experienced it. I want to preach. And somebody says, I have had preachers, but Apostle Grace. I don't know who I'm talking to. May the Lord cause you to say things. And somebody says, I have heard people speaking. But you woman, you man, I've seen people doing business. But, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We have seen leaders, but. In everything, we're going to be the best. Tell somebody our responsibility is bigger. Yes. That is why when you choose to pray, pray. That is why when you choose to fast, fast. If you enter marriage, enter. Are you hearing me? If you choose to preach, preach. If you say you're born again, lokoka. Get born again. If you're saying you want to go crazy. Become crazy. If you choose to believe. Believe. 
Some of us, our blood is in the covenant now. Even if it means to die for this thing, we can die for it. I'm not encouraging you. I'm telling you the truth. Because we died long ago. Our lives are no longer dear to us. I feel sorry for some of you. Who feel you? Your life is too dear to pray at night. Your life is too dear to... to you're tired. Some of us no longer have an excuse. And I have believed God. That Uganda will get to first world when we are alive. Researchers might say it's impossible. Economists might say it's impossible. But I'm talking of a God who took sin out of a nation in one day. I'm talking of a God who reduced the army of Gideon from 30,000 to 300. Because he didn't want that victory to be accorded to numbers. And he says it's a small thing for God can save with many like he can save with few. I'm talking of the God who can separate water and men pass through unharmed. That's the God I'm talking about. He's the one I believed. The God we are talking about is not a cheap God. Are you hearing me? He flipped and fought the enemies of Israel and killed them by the sword. He slain men and cut armies into blindness. Because he had to give victory. He put some to sleep and they were, they were killed. Each one. You, see, you remember the stories of the Jonathans and what? The Joshua's. Man, men just sleep. Are you hearing me? And then somebody just goes pricking one at a go until they die. That's the God we are talking about. I'm talking of a God who can give victory without even raising a sword. That God who can judge a man tomorrow morning. And you cannot believe where you are. You... Some of you think you need 25 years, but I'm speaking upon your life. May the Lord God of Israel hasten this. That some of you, you're going to look at yourself and you will not believe that it has happened in the shortest time possible. He is the master of time. The redeemer of all dimensions of the spirit. Who knows how to quicken? The Bible says he raises one and puts another down. That same God can do it. He's the Lord of hosts. Adonijah, our possessor. The God that possessed us. Something must happen in this generation. Pastors, we can't be no more men. We can't have no more ministries anymore. We can't. We can't. Minister of the gospel. We can't preach and minister normally anymore. No. We've gotten to a point where even the Lord knows we are tired. Some have settled in that comfort. But some of us are tired. We are really tired. You understand what I'm saying? Some of you can't continue with the jobs you're working on. You're going to die. Some of you can go continue at the pace which you're working. You're going to die. Some of you cannot continue at the pace at which you earn. You're not going to be able to educate your children. You're not going to build ministry. No way. No way. Some must change. Some must change. Some must change. Some must change. Something must change. The Bible speaks of one time how Israel was surrounded and God caused this, a voice of many armies. And the enemies of Israel were threatened because they thought that many armies were chasing after them. Lo and behold, there was no army. There was no horse. But if God has to cause a man to hear something, so that man will pave a way for your grace to operate, he will do it. The Bible says he even gave up nations for you. This is to the extent that God would rather let some people die for you to live to the purpose God has called you to live. That is why no man can touch you. No man can touch you. We are tired of the system that is making Christianity and Christians predictable. We are tired. We are tired. 
That is why Jesus came. That we might be priests and kings to the most high. That we might receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. That we might reign in this one life by that one man, Jesus. And I am ready to rule. I am ready to reign. I'm not talking of people who act like they are reigning in deception. I'm talking about true success. I'm talking about true glory. I'm talking about true increase. Real results. People can see and say, ah, ah, oh no, yeah. These are results. May God do something in your life that is undeniable. Recently, we received a report with Pastor Zach. Somebody was driving a car, and their car was on empty. And then they put in a sermon. And then the sermon charged them. And they started speaking in tongues. And the God started coming up like this. Alone. Because of this thing we are preaching. As she was speaking in tongues, the gauge started coming up. Rabakosa. Shitelebaya. And that is nothing compared to what the Lord has prepared for us. We are going to do things by the word until people start calling us witch doctors. When they call you cult or witch doctors or sorcerers, it's okay. There's already enough sorcery in the world. You're talking of men who got sticks and threw them down and they became snakes. What are you talking about? The God of Israel. Whether they call you what or what, let them call it. I, I listen, at this level, I don't care what a man calls me. Because there's something inside my head telling me. I was made for something. And I refuse to be put under a predictable system. I refuse. To run my life under the economy of Uganda. I refuse to run my life under the political system and the social in Uganda. No. Let God judge whoever he has to judge. But we will not suffer because of men. We refuse. That will not happen when we are in this nation. By the way, we love this land. Some of you don't know. We really love our land. You understand what I'm saying? And if some people are ready to slow us. We shall report them to God. We'll go on our knees for 15 minutes. But some of us have refused. We have refused to die no more men. We have refused it. It even angers us to think that we can be no more. Somebody speak in other tongues. Are you feeling the anointing? Come on, speak in other tongues. And I will run to you. Come on, speak in other tongues. Two minutes or three. Holy Spirit, I ask you, change somebody's course tonight. Get somebody out of a certain system tonight. Indeed, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. called you to a life of struggle. He paid it all. He paid it all. He 
He paid it all. He paid for your success. He paid for your health. He paid for your children. He paid for your marriage. He paid for your ministry. The Bible says that you're now able ministers of the covenant. Jesus paid it all. And to him my own. Sin had left a crimson stain. He paid for it. I refuse to be a second class citizen. I refuse to be a survivor in this world. I refuse to struggle with the elements of this world. Jesus paid it all. At the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Because it is done. Somebody give the Lord a mighty, 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 mighty. This is what I hear by God to tell you. That there is a great redemption of time. There is a great redemption of time. I don't know who is ready to take this or to believe it. But somebody at the sound of my voice in a few weeks, in a few days, people are going to look at you and they will not believe it. You're going to live more than first world, more than first economy, more than first wisdom, more than first glory. You're going to live above. They'll say it upon your life and say that she is a third, she's in a third world, but she's not third world. In every aspect, even first world, those first world nations, they are going to bow. They are going to realize that there is a world above first world. It's called Zion, the city of the living God. The company of innumerable angels. Spirits of just men made perfect. To Jesus the mediator of a covenant. Whose blood speaketh better things. Than the blood of Cain and Abel. He says you shall be the heads. And not the tail. God is going to do something in the church. How many of you know. That we are living in a time. According to the prophetic scriptures. Where the church is going to be feared. The Bible says the Lord worked with Moses and people feared. We have entered the zone and time where God is going to work into our lives and men will fear. Can I believe it and receive it in the name of Jesus? If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, you want to be born again, I want you to put up your hand. I want to pray with you. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Come, 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 just come. It's the greatest miracle of all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 This is the best decision you'll ever make. Some of you, your life begins today, literally. You're going to enter unexplainable zones of your life. I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Who died for me? Who shed his blood 
for me. Tonight, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm born again. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.